Do you think you have wishlisted every strategy game you want to play in the future? Well, I bet that you will find some you have skipped over during this video. My name is Peter and I want to welcome you to another showcase of upcoming strategy games. Here you will learn about new game projects from both AAA and indie development studios covering every strategy subgenre from RTS and turn-based tactical party RPGs to Forex, city building and tycoons. These games are set in sandy sci-fi and lush fantasy worlds, medieval kingdoms, modern times and the obligatory world war. And that is exactly the setting from which we will start with Man of War 2, a sequel to a beloved real-time strategy franchise which is known for making players cry out in victory and squeal in defeat. Its developers at Best Way are taking us to both the Eastern and Western fronts with new units and game modes, fresh locations and campaigns, while keeping their trademark historical accuracy and action-filled gameplay with 3 voting sides, 45 different unit battalions and over 300 vehicles. Besides a narrative-driven single-player campaign, you will be able to practice your troop movements and offensive plays in skirmish and co-op mode, before getting blown to hell and back in multiplayer by hardcore and also friendly players who will give you the courtesy of explaining how they dismantled you in minutes. This is when you actually learn how to directly control every soldier, lay ambushes, properly use infantry, armor, air and support units, while exploiting cover and destructible environments to your advantage. Or you can just raise the white flag and create and share your own war scenarios using the special level design and modding toolset. This next game is also a sequel, but it's also so much more than that. It is an attempt to return to the roots of a great franchise which was going down the wrong path for many years. The Settlers. Delayed and redesigned a bunch of times, this medieval base building and real-time strategy game is looking fabulous in the Snowdrop engine and it plays more like Age of Empires 4 than a production chain manager. Its developers might be under a new name, but they are all veterans from Blue Byte, the original studio which created this franchise. To its new and returning players, the settlers will offer a story-driven campaign, the special new onslaught mode, and online skirmishes with up to 8 players or AI. There are 3 new distinctive factions to choose from, each with a special military unit and building style. Besides resource collection, interwoven production chains and army training, there are new mechanics like transportation, researching upgrades for your army and exploring landmarks in different biomes. These offer special rewards and require players to adapt their playstyle, spicing up the gameplay. The story follows a group of settlers fleeing from a military coup on their home island as they try to find the promised land of their ancestors. You will help them explore and settle new islands while making allies and fighting against ruthless bandits. Expectations are mixed because of the game's rocky development path, but I am still optimistic. For this next game though, I am totally excited. After 20 years of waiting, we are finally getting a new game set on Dune. The only downside is that it's not a pure base building and real-time strategy, but mixed with 4x elements. This is why its developers at Shiro Games, also known for Northgard, have given a lot of details about the gameplay. There will be exploration of sandworm-infested deserts, economic growth and a deep resource management system centered on harvesting the spice. Then combat, politics, spying and even covert operations. Base building won't be freeform but more interface based, meaning civilization style. The game will feature at least 5 actions, starting with House Harkonnen and House Atreides, the two most important ones. The desert maps of Arrakis will be procedurally generated with lots of customization and unique landmarks from the book lore. The stylized art style is by design, so more variety can be added to what would otherwise be a mostly desert and empty planet. Multiplayer and a single player campaign will be added besides the current skirmish mode. Another major movie franchise has a new game coming up and it's called Marvel's Midnight Suns. It is a turn-based tactical RPG where besides the fan favorites like Iron Man, Wolverine and Captain America, you'll be able to create and customize your own original hero in the Marvel Universe called Hunter. The developers who are brave enough to tackle this massive franchise in lore are from none other than Firaxis Games, the makers of Civilization and new XCOM games. If anyone can get a turn-based combat game right, it's them. The storyline is about Hydra reviving Lilith, the mother of demons, who aims to raise an evil even more powerful than her and destroy the world. Your hero, who is her actual forsaken child, along with the likes of Blade, Ghost Rider and other heroes with supernatural powers, will try to help the Avengers to stop her. 
You will fight in third person in short distance engagements with flashy combat moves and power strikes against multiple types of enemies on immersive battlefields across many locations. Naturally, there will be room for lots of Marvel staple banter and humor between the superheroes, especially back at your home base. Let's now take a break from war games and look at our roller coaster builder and amusement park manager from the developers at Limbic Entertainment titled Park Beyond. Its main gameplay of building increasingly crazy rides and modular coasters is laid out for you in the story-driven campaign mode where you are a newly hired visionary architect at a struggling theme park company. There are a few other characters which will join you on the ride, pun intended, to lead the company to success and profits. Then you can move on to the sandbox mode and tinker with ride designs to your heart's content using dozens of innovative modules to easily create unique roller coasters with thousands of combinations while adding even some really outlandish ideas from the over-the-top R&D department. The visitor's happiness is of course your main metric, and Park Beyond will give you extensive feedback information to base your future plans on. You will be able to follow visitors' trends, create shop designs, recruit and manage staff, set the marketing budget and invest in research and development. For all you old-school RTS and base-building fans, I have great news. The developers of Homeworld 3 from Blackbird Interactive and veterans of the genre are making a totally new game with a mix of elements from all the classics from StarCraft and Dune to CNC Generals and even some Halo Wars in the mix. It is called Crossfire Legion and it is set in the near future where mercenaries fight for both governments and terrorists with modern and some sci-fi weapons like mech cannons, shields and teleportation. There will be three factions, somewhat asymmetrical in their land and air units and combat abilities. The visual and audio design is top-notch, but the battles are not massive enough to slow down your PC because there is a unit limit. Every faction has its own commanders and they have two special abilities which can heal units, teleport them, increase rate of fire or rain down high explosives. Units can be customized by the use of special cards before each match and most of them have their own defensive or offensive abilities like a tank which stops and deploys extra armor or a support truck with a sonic shield. There will be many multiplayer modes, a single player campaign, ranked leaderboards, a replay system and a level editor with Steam Workshop support. So this would not be a complete list if I didn't show you a roguelike turn-based game of some sorts. And here is a really curious one. It's called Power Chord and it's been developed by Big Blue Bubble. Here you assemble a team of Earth's mightiest musicians from a diverse cast of kick-ass characters to combat evil demons and monsters with music instruments and powerful skills from your deck. Your quest? is to destroy the only guitar powerful enough to reopen a portal between worlds. You have to be careful in this musical combat, because if a band member falls in battle, you will lose them and access to their cards in future battles, until you revive them at a pit stop. You can also unlock new strategies to take down demons and strengthen your instruments of destruction. There are branching story paths on which you run into merchants, random encounters and valuable rest locations to heal and revive those fallen characters. Another staple of these lists are realistic or semi-realistic medieval simulators with strategy elements. Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn belongs to the former kind, has some historical depth and sets you up as a noble who is to match his city and villages while making decisions in non-linear events, commanding defenses in sieges and organizing raids. Those will result in lots of loot but also retribution. To defend your city, you will need to train soldiers, finance war machines and fortifications. It's developed by Gentle Griffins and set in the time of the Hundred Years War between France and England and it is their attempt at making a hybrid between a simulator and a strategy game. You as the player will lead the rebuilding of a city which is in the center of your land and attempt to restore the power of your family. You will do this by taxation, military conscription, employing specialists, financing projects settling disputes and negotiating with various factions along with organizing balls, festivities and tournaments. Now let's look at another medieval kingdom simulation where you manage your noble family but which does things very differently. Norland is a game where you deal with a class society, crime, slave revolts, religious conflict, economic issues, personal relations, treachery, secret murders and even some spectacular bloody battles. It's being developed by Long John and its main idea is to generate organic but complex stories inspired by the likes of Rimworld, Crusader Kings and Caesar. 
Your family city is a place where a large variety of characters interact with each other, peasants, slaves, soldiers, criminals, and they all have different needs, wants, and individual traits which can be passed on to their children. All of them will pitch in to build defenses and take up arms in combat, while you manage production chains, wages, markets, trade, and make decisions about events on the global map. There will be blackmail, plague-infested refugees, natural disasters, and all sorts of nasty surprises as you compete with other city-states and kingdoms. Now, Tycoon games might not be exactly strategy games, but I know a lot of you enjoy these too. So here is one military camp. It's about first building and then managing your military camp and recruits to raise your bottom line. You have to pick the best recruits, choose how to train their physical and tactical abilities, and then send them into dangerous missions worldwide, kinda like Evil Genius gameplay. It is being developed by Ableolite Barcelona, who have a long history of making similar games. Sending your recruits on multiple training courses will make them into highly specialized soldiers capable of tackling more profitable missions, but you will first have to upgrade buildings in your camp to unlock those courses. Between training sessions, soldiers will want to eat and sleep, so there are a number of other buildings you will need to add to your growing military camp. There is another RTS and base building game I want to show you, but before that, I want to ask you to hit that like button if you have been enjoying this video, tell me which game you are playing right now, and subscribe so you don't miss my next game showcase. So this one is a mixed bag of gameplay elements, as its developers at Fennec have added the roguelike deck building to a classic RTS to create a rogue command. You start each game with an engineer to construct a base, collect resources and build units, but you also assemble an evolving card deck full of powerful combos. This means games don't have a constant build order, but a dynamic system of switching blueprints for unit production or defensive buildings and even super weapons. These cards can even be modded, which adds new abilities to units and buildings. It is a single player experience on a main world map with many different enemies, 20 procedurally generated map types to battle on, which all have distinct events and environmental hazards. Its setting is a bit sci-fi, so you have both nanites and robots at your command. And on the subject of command, I know many of you would like to play a new game like the old school Mech Commander, in real time or front mission and turn based, and I have found one such game for you, Krieg's Run Tactics. This one is turn based and set in the alternate 1970s. You build your squad of pilots, customize your mechs, equip them and run missions in the jungles of southeastern Asia. The developers, Toj Productions, have already made it possible to use its editor on Steam and play around with mech setups and equipment as well as making your own battlefields, so give that a spin. But if you prefer the Dark Ages as the setting and maybe some magic sprinkled in, you might enjoy Cascade Tactics. This is a tactical, turn-based RPG in which you lead a team of mercenaries in a fantasy land at war. Its developers at Mythic Machine Software LLC have implemented a number of interesting mechanics into their game. For example, there is a dual class system with cool synergies of power your characters can learn to use. Magic spells often work in a way of channeling, so if you damage the caster, you break his spell. You can also shield or move your characters out of danger, as not all spells will hit instantly on the turn they are cast. An interesting character combat combo is when a necromancer raises a skeleton for every target an archer takes out, while a ninja and a commander together let you attack more often and there are more combos available with the Pyromancer, Lancer and Sentinel classes. A somewhat similar game, but in a much different setting and a hex based map is Oaken. Its developers at Lackey Studios are making it as a roguelike tactical turn based game with deck building in a mythical land that is stretched among the branches of the Great Oak. Its inhabitants are spirits which have some Celtic and tribal looks and among them you gather your party to either heal or destroy the Great Oak. You do have to keep your main hero, the lady, alive or it's game over. Maps you fight on are randomly generated from a non-linear tree world map with tons of details, bosses and events and come in a variety of biomes. As you go from battle to battle, you will find enchantments, items and upgrade your spells and cards. If you are getting tired of turn-based combat, I have a perfect tycoon management simulator for you, Potion Tycoon. This is a game about building and developing your own magic shop in which you sell, well, potions of all sorts and kinds. 
Not only do you produce and sell these, but you also get to design the bottles, research new items and experiment with new recipes. If you become successful enough, even VIPs will come to shop at your place, but do note they can ruin your reputation if they are not satisfied. There is resource gathering by sending out search parties, managing production lines and staff, which can level up. You can expand your shop and fill it with nice furniture, so shoppers will enjoy their visit more. The developers at Snowhound Games are also behind another indie gem, Deep Sky Derelicts, a sci-fi turn-based tactical RPG which I warmly recommend you try out. And another such game you might be interested in, albeit in Might and Magic setting, is Zodiac Legion. It offers actual stronghold building and development of your mini army of champions who fight against sorcerers. Those are found when you raid forgotten ruins and places of power or in big armies which attack your borders. Your warriors and knights of the Zodiac Legion are trained in the arcane arts, develop superhuman powers and fight even in death if you don't mind using some necromancy on them. The dungeons are actually fully destructible and you can reshape the terrain to your advantage. Besides expanding your stronghold, you can research new spells and craft artifacts. The game was named Zodiac Legion because the developers at Studio Draconis created a system of connecting astrology with all aspects of gameplay and storytelling and it even serves as a foundation of the character's class system. But if astrology isn't your thing, maybe you love crafting lore is. This is the team developers at SC 16-bit Knights SRL, the strangest dev team name I ever came across, are using in their RTS team survival game Chromosome Evil. Your main objective here is for you and your squad to survive an onslaught of nightmarish creatures, reanimated dead and other abominations. Your team will consist of different specialists which all have their own sets of skills and weapons. There are soldiers who specialize in killing, medics who keep your team alive, but also engineers who set up barricades and traps. Outside of battle, you manage your team composition, their equipment and skills you want them to use and practice. Then you pick the location to send them, the route they will take to get there and how to deal with random events. Your main mission is to discover why and how these creatures keep coming back from the underground. If that is all too dark for you, how about another game set on a desert world? Sandwalkers by Goblin Studio is another roguelike turn-based exploration game which they are well known for like As Far As The Eye and to some extent Legend of Keepers and Banner of Ruin. In this one you first build a team and then try to cross different hostile environments while facing enemies and other dangers to establish diplomatic and trade relations between different tribes. All this with the ultimate aim of resurrecting a mother tree called Umama and growing a new tree city. The lands are filled with monsters and pirates who are just as dangerous as the acid rain, sandstorms and heat waves. Each team and caravan you send out will return their memories back to the capital using beetles and Christospheres to pass on their gained knowledge. This is gained by taming hostile creatures, rescuing refugees, seeking allies for mutual aid or following the blood path and looting everything you can in mythical ruins. For the last game of this list, I have a very different looking game which is something between a tycoon, builder and simulation. It is called Casino Resort Tower and it's being developed by Kaiperk Software. Here you are in charge of everything, from the troublesome employees, transportation of guests and planning restaurant stockpiles and menus, to the hotel side business of your casino resort and organizing entertainment events. But the main income will be from the casino floor where you also have cheaters to contend with. You have to provide your guests with a variety of games, like roulette, different car games, slot machines and dice games, but also keno, bingo and even fortune wheels. You will start with a basic shelf structure and plan your new casino room by room with water, electricity, internet and switch systems as the construction goes on. Then comes furniture, windows, wallpapers, lights and decorations. But not all guests like the same things, so make sure to keep track of their likes and dislikes. This will of course require maintenance and cleaning by janitors and housekeepers or guests won't be happy and you will feel that in your bottom line. This may have been the last game of this showcase, but there will be many more video lists of new and upcoming games I will be posting. I hope you will wishlist a number of these games and ultimately enjoy playing them. For more such games, check out the video cards displayed on the screen now or links in the description. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.